Right, I'm in the van. It is so goddamn hot, it's unbelievable. Overland the show. Wow, was that amazing. Absolutely brilliant. And I think the icing on the cake for me, and I'm sure that you'll probably agree, is uh, when Adrian uh, proposed to uh, Faith. <laughs> that was just, congratulations guys. So congratulations to uh, Unimpressed Jeff, which I'm now is probably super impressed, and uh, Faith. So, uh, and I love her singing. So right, today's video. I've got myself an inverter. Now, I am a little bit disappointed in myself because normally I'd just go and buy Victron stuff, but they're fucking expensive, aren't they? Victron inverters. They might be brilliant and really efficient, but they are so expensive. I've ordered a Chinese, Chinesium inverter, big green thing from eBay, just over 300 quid. Now it's pure sine wave and it's 3,500 watts continuous, allegedly, and 7,000 peak, allegedly. So, I'm going to try and fit it in the back. I wanted one. I really, really wanted, actually, to be fair. I wanted a Renergy one. Because they got the UPS, haven't they? So you can just plug that into your consumer unit on an RCD. And it automatically changes over. But there's none in stock in the UK. And I'm not prepared to wait. So I've got a E-coder, or Ed-coder, or E-decoder. I'll turn it around and I'll show you. So there it is. Two whopping like fans on the rear, and you can see at the top the terminals. And on the back, more importantly, it's got two UK sockets. But what I wanted it for is the uh, wired in outlet. Because then that can go to a uh, an RCD, a consumer unit. But there, yes. Also handy, I'll put it down. As it comes with. Well, a book. Some cables which personally I'll sit down don't look exactly very beefy do they yeah they might work they might not I'll amp clamp them later and see what's coming out and a really useful thing is another one of my main priorities was quite a detailed remote so you can turn it on and off it actually has USB ports of it as well which could be handy uh, hang on a second Teddy Teddy's done a runner um, and obviously the on and off button comes with cat5 cable so you can Line them up. That's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, yeah, short of me having to pay probably 16 or 17 or maybe 2,000 pounds for a Victron inverter, which is what I'd really like to match with all the other Victron stuff. I just think that's a bit crazy. Crazy money. Crazy money. And obviously, the unavailability of the uh, energy even 2,000, 1,000, 3,000 watt. Uh, they're all unavailable. So, I wasn't gonna wait. These, these things here, a couple of friends have got them, they recommended them. Uh, they said they're okay. You pay for what you get, I suppose. So, I'm gonna fit this in the back. Uh, I'm not sure that where I wanna fit it because 
I will be uh, doing a comparison test uh, on my 220 amp AGM battery and then later when it arrives a 300 amp hour lithium Roma battery which I'm super excited and waiting for. So I'm gonna go get hot and sweaty in the back of the van. Let's go. Right. Let's have a quick look at what what we got. So in the corner here. Bit messy at the moment. Got the Orion Smart DC to DC charger, and then the 100 stroke 50 MPPT small fuse box, and then up there you can see the aux beam stuff that links, and then obviously my shunt and the little inverter. And then all of that just comes off of uh, for the charger for my Milwaukee tools. And down there is my 220 amp AGM battery, the Smart Sense, and Smart Charger. So obviously this is going to get replaced with an RCD and everything else done properly. Now. The battery at the moment lives down there. I'm not really happy about that there because it's right next to the diesel tank and if anything was to happen, then proper, maybe a possible point for ignition. So I'm gonna change that. Sean? Oh, sorry. Hi, sorry. Sorry? Yeah. Right, so I might just reinforce this panel here and see if it will fit there because that's quite sturdy it obviously it's fixed to here and then i can probably just wire obviously these cables here to that inverter i mean they're they're, they're for that so this is a 1000 watts maximum 500 oh where am i So the wires here go to the little inverter. So this one here is a, um, it's a 1000 max 500 watt inverter. And it's been absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'll, to be fair, I haven't really used it very much, but it's been cool. So I'm going to replace these wires that go into the links. And then I should put the new inverter here. But I'll probably, I'm going to get some brackets wind them in there so I'll do that first Okay, there's one, and uh, I'll just do the other one and come back. Right, so two brackets are in, done and dusted, not pretty, 
but it's function over form isn't it at the end of the day so go and get the inverter and put it on here hopefully see what it looks like what i might have to do actually is i can't remember well i'm gonna have to look at the fans because i'd much rather the fans pushing out and pushing out there or sucking or blowing or whatever they do so i'm gonna have to look at the direction of the fan blades so which way i'm gonna put it up Okay, after a bit of deliberation with myself, I'm going to have to have a bit of a shift around. So obviously, that would no longer be needed. And this and this is going to get moved. So, not sure where, but obviously this is where the inverter is going to go. So basically, I'm going to put that on there and then the inverter on here. So that... So this and this are going to move down to here and then the, the inverter can go there. Otherwise I'm going to have to change all of this. All of this has to be gently shifted up for it to go here. And that means turning all the power off, turning the solar off, turning the master switch off, which I can't be bothered to do. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to see what it looks like first. So first of all, I'm going to move this and this and put it here. Right. So the uh, Milwaukee battery charger is moved from there to there, all plugged in. So it just pushes in, job done. Just double check that it works. So I've got me one down here. There you go. Light on. Job done. So now, take this off. Which means undoing this cover, putting a fuse, putting it all off. I'm going to do that now. Right. Well, I've taken the leads out of the packet. They seem to have doubled it up. So doesn't seem too bad so I've just loosely put them on there I haven't really tightened these up so it allows them to move a little bit and then I can now put it in that space there the only thing is the mountings are no better than the little one really I mean look it's quite, I mean, that's not heavy, and that's not really heavy, but just like four, not really, not really impressed about that. Anyway, so how it goes. In the instruction manual, the uh, it gives you a flow direction, so it goes in, so it goes across the board and out the back. So hopefully that'll be okay, going across. So, I'm going to put it on now. Okay, right, it's on there. And it's pretty sturdy, so I'll give it that. Right. So what I'm going to do now is connect the positive and the negative to the bus bar. Right. It's all back in, all wired up. These are as tight as I possibly can. I'll put a bit of a cloth over them and got some pipe grips. So that goes down to the battery. It to be sort of tucked out a little bit, but I'm not going to bother with that too much because that's okay there. And the battery, as I say, will be changed. But right, so uh, turn it on. All right, no error. Right, and for temporary measures, I have wired up. Right, this cable I've got here is from Wix. And because it's for an induction cooker and an air fryer, you can actually buy, this is 2.5 mil. 
at 13 amps. So I believe that works out at around about 1,300 amps. No, sorry, watts. Watts. And this cable is guaranteed to withstand heat internally up to 90 degrees. Now, it was quite expensive for what it was, but when it's in the back of here, I don't really want to be worrying about it. So, let's just, I'll turn it off. I'll plug that in. All right. So that's just there for the time being. I say, I will have probably here a uh, consumer unit RCD. I might have to move it up slightly. There is a bit of precision to move this up if it doesn't all fit. So we're still on float at the moment. So let's go, let's go and draw some power from it. Actually, first things first, let's take this out of the packet and go and connect this up. This hopefully will live or something like that. Right, so there is, that's not flashing, that's just the uh, cycles on the camera. So there we have the two correct lights. So obviously there's no earth. So the last light's not gonna show. But there you go. I've got some nice ones, and I'm gonna have a panel there away from the sink. I was gonna change the kitchen around, but I'm gonna leave it at that, because obviously I don't want these sockets up here, because my Xbox is behind there, and the bed's behind there, and I don't want cables near my bed. So they're gonna be down here, out of the way, set back a little bit, and then obviously at a later date, the cupboard. So we're on at the moment, and hunky-dory. So I'm gonna connect up the remote and see what that says on there. It's gonna just not put it there for the time being, but it will live, I don't know, probably somewhere like that, or there, probably there, it looks a bit neater. Anyway, go do that now. Right, just temporarily put it there. So hold it. Okay, so we are at 13.7 volts, 240 volts at 50 hertz. Right. Okay, so we're off at the moment. And on. Now it's not flashing, it's just like the hertz. But in my infinite wisdom, <laughs> I don't have any induction cookware. So I'm going to have to go and buy some, aren't I? Put a bit of a dip. Right, as you can see from the Victron, this is the MPPT. And we're on a float at the moment, so we're putting just like 89 watts just to keep the van topped up so we'll go out of that and we'll go on to the smart if it will come on thank you right state of charge 98% okay so at the moment we're not really doing anything so turn it off and then I'll I'll turn it on. All right. So now I expect we start consuming stuff. All right. I'll turn the hob on. Mm. I was expecting something. Right, so at the moment, we're just on, not cooking anything. So I'll turn it off, 
and I don't know why that, normally that says something there, time. Bloody Victron app. Okay, so let's go and, I'm going to try and cook something. There's the old gas thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is magnetic. I can easily find out. That's not going to work then, is it? Where's the other one? Right. Okay. Right. This is magnetic. So hopefully, put some water in there. And we boil. I don't know. Three now, dude. That is it. Right. So. On. Oh, power. Don't like that much. So, 600 watts. Oh, there we go, look. So at the moment, the old AGM battery seems to be coping okay. Now I have got it on only 600 watts, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know what this is saying. A bit of discrepancy there. 12.7 volts. Drops down to 11.9. And the Victron. So it's cutting in. I mean, at the moment, the AGM battery's coping. And we are cooking via the sun. Let's turn it up a little bit. So now we've gone to 800 watts. Yeah, that was surprising. That's hot already. So we've obviously gone down 1% on the uh, battery. We are, have a look at the uh, voltage. It is fluctuating, but I think that's where it's, this is obviously pulsing in and out. But you can already see, only after probably about a minute, that we are actually getting some bubbles. So at 97%. I mean, at the moment, obviously, the sun's blasting down on the van and uh, we are producing solar, so I expect they're counteracting each other. I might be a bit cheeky, actually, and turn it up. Right, so now we've got a 1,000 watts coming out of that 220 amp AGM battery. So now obviously we've gone down from a day to hours now. But we are nigh on. Uh, we've got steam, so I pretty much reckon that that is done. Any more hot than that, you're just going to burn your mouth, aren't you? 
So we're on a constant 1000 watts off of a 220 amp ATM battery connected to a 3500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And there you go. Boiling water. So the battery is actually gonna <laughs> so as far as I'm saying, that's job done. Right, so we'll see how quickly the battery recovers. Right, we're at 94%, so... Obviously we're not drawing anything. Well, it says they were drawing 104 watts. Can't see that myself. But there you go, look. 12.9 volts, 242 volts at 50 hertz. And we've consumed roughly 10.4 amps. Right, let's go out of that and see what the MPPT is doing. So now we're banging in a bit more power, 149 watts. Now we're on a bulk charge and the battery is at 24 degrees. I don't even know what the temperature is today. There you go. So we are at the moment 25, 6, 7, 80 Fahrenheit. Battery's on bulk charge now. And fuck. Yes. Hot. Right, so. I suppose we'll let the battery uh, recover a little bit and we'll break out the um, air fryer. In the meantime, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea with that hot water. Right, I've just sort of sussed out that I thought, hang on a minute, this remote control is actually not doing anything. Uh, when you turn it off, the... Um, the display here was still on so I went back to the inverter and you have to turn the inverter off and then the remote control works and you can power it on so the switch for this at the inverter must be off for the remote control to work so you're pretty good I suppose, you can see the full battery and then like the load. A couple of USBs if you really need them, which I just thought was quite handy. Anyway, that's off for the moment. So we'll let the battery recover and then we'll break out the air fryer. Right, the air fryer. So this is the first time I'm uh, going to get it out. Now this, this air fryer I got from Tesco's. So yeah, this uh, this air fryer, I think it retails normally at oh how much was it? Uh, Seventy quid. But in the Tesco's club card, it was fifty pounds. So I thought, you know what? give it a go and it's all digital that's what I liked about it no knobs so let's put it up here right 
It is quite a lot bigger than what I thought it would be. I mean, yeah. That is quite big. I mean, I've got one at home and it's like half the size of that. pretty cool it looks like it's all touch sensitive oh look at that oh i like this let's move it a bit closer oh 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 well we're done well we're done doing something christ okay No heat coming out of it, so but look at that. I reckon we could get a cheese toasty in there. I really do. That'd be so cool. Quite a lot of chicken in there as well. I'll do it like that. That's quite cool. I don't know what any of these buttons do. They look like temperature buttons. There and there. So that like is. That must be time on and off. So 15 minutes, 180 degrees. So, I don't know what that means. Oh yeah, there we go, look. And then temperature. So a minimum of 80 degrees on that. And obviously we're not pulling anything. There's no load. We're still at 13.5 amps. Amps, volts, thick. And that's what the Victron's saying. So, there you go, 4.4 amps, 61 watts. And that includes absolutely everything in this van. Obviously, we've got the Wi Fi, diesel heater, my uh, Shoreline Ridge Fringe Freezer and everything else is on it. I don't, I don't switch this van off. So, there we go. At 96.3%. Allegedly, infinite. So, oh, okay. All right, all right, chill out. Calm down. So, let's put something in here. cook right this is a tower four litre so I expect that with the four litre bit and the maximum wattage is 1400 so out of my uh, fridge freezer let's get Right, okay. I'm not gonna eat four, so I'm gonna put put two in. Right. I don't even know what it would like. What heat to put them on? You cook it like an oven? Right, 30 minutes. Gas mark six. Wow, well, okay, well I don't know what to do here really, to be fair. If you know what it is, if you can understand all this, into air fryers. So I'm just gonna, oh, 15 minutes, that sounds like a cool. So, go on in, start. 
Oh, oh, we got that fries here. Fries. Oh, chicken. That's cool. So how'd you start it then? Oh. Oh no. Cake. What's that? Steak. Fish. Bacon. Right. So chips. Chicken. Why didn't I read the instructions? Oh. Didn't need to. Right, so now we're cooking. So I'll put this back in the fridge. Fold that down. Right. So, let's bring this back in. That's the MPPT, we don't really want that. There's the BMV. Right, 95% state of charge. Allegedly, we've only got a 50. Oh, we're going down. But we're not bothered about that. We are actually drawing <laughs> 1,440. Well, wow, that's a few watts, isn't it? voltage has gone right down so we could possibly trip this little 220 amp AGM battery out but we'll see how it goes right we're a couple of minutes in we got 23 so we've been cooking for about two minutes now and obviously the air fryer has obviously got up to its temperature because the voltage is now from the battery so it's kicking in and out so we just have a quick look at that so obviously we were like on like 20 30 well 30 40 minutes earlier so now we're up to two hours and then obviously the voltage is going down and that's probably because the heating element has kicked in so still at 180 degrees 22 minutes and I think it's just kicked out so now the battery voltage is going up and we've got an infinite power supply so I reckon we're probably okay right let's have a look at the off power figures because we are running off AGM don't forget so at the moment, we've just got a little bit of a bar missing and we're running at uh, 1283. There's some discrepancy. So obviously now it's gone down because the uh, heating elements... Oh, no, 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 what did I do? Uh, okay, it's okay. So the heating elements on at the moment, so the voltage is obviously dropping. But what we'll do is we'll go around the back and we'll see if the uh, fans are kicked in. Right, we're at the back. There's no heat coming out of these cables. There's no heat coming out of the inverter. Fans haven't kicked on. I mean, it's happy as Larry. Yeah. Happy as Larry. So, good enough. All right, let's go back to the front. See how the chicken's doing. All right, we're at 86% uh, and 1267 volts. We have consumed 19.7 amp hours. Now we're only also at 23 watts, and I'll, that's probably because the air fryer is on its like little fan sort of cycle. 
but I'm pretty sure at the moment 12.75 volts 86 percent on an AMG 220 battery I reckon the next time that comes on we might get a low voltage alarm so 12 hours it's going to go down because we've got I've set the alarm quite quite low really so 1176 it's not there we go so we've got a low voltage alarm as long as that clicks in and out probably all right so there you go it's turned off now but we've still got 10 minutes but let's have a look at the chickens like oh fuck fuck right in all fairness I might give that a couple of minutes and that's probably done. I don't reckon you need another 10 minutes. So obviously that little pause in cooking there has allowed the battery to recover a little bit. Ah, you can definitely see the lights dim down when that kicks, when the air fryer heating element kicks in. So we've got there we go, low voltage alarm again. It's gone off. So I'm going to give us another couple of minutes. I'll probably let it go to eight minutes. And we're at 84%. I mean, if you wanted to lower the alarm down, that probably wouldn't go off, or we could just turn the alarm off. Because at the moment, it's a really super hot, sunny day, and we're banging in the solar. So we'll just quickly go back to the solar. Come on. See what's happening. I mean, it is quite late in the day now, so see how it is. 115, 110 watts. Uh, it's going down, look. So, and we're on a bulk charge. That's seven. There you go. So it's just going up to nine. Nearly ten. There you go. So we have, we're banging in. Well, there you go, 11 amps. Oh no, sorry, solar, 5 amps. We're actually using 11 amps. And the voltage alarm's gone off again. So maybe, maybe the uh, AGM battery is struggling a little bit. But in this hot weather, it's coping. Anything less, it probably struggle. So I'm gonna let this go down to eight minutes and then I'm gonna go, then I'm gonna let it cool down and then probably eat it. There you go, eight minutes. So that's, I reckon that's, right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Fuck, shit, oh, bugger. Right, that's done. That look, that's cooked. That is definitely cooked. Shit, that's hot. Right, serve it up. Right, so I've turned it all off. That chicken is well and truly cooked. Okay. Solar is banging in now 138 watts. We're trying to recover the battery, charging at five, just around about five amps. And we're the battery voltage is going back up now, so let's have a quick look on BMV. When well, I've got the state of charge, eighty-three percent, and we've consumed twenty-three amp hours, and that is boiling hot water and cooking for around about eighteen minutes on the old air fryer which is 1400 watts and this is a 2000 watt but we only used it to go up to i can't remember now i have to rewind the video right so in all fairness what is the total cost air fryer that was 50 quid this was also uh this was 70 quid okay now we've got all the Victron stuff. 
we all know how much that costs. And the inverter, uh, that's 330. But on eBay, I paid with an offer 314 pound. With the battery, which is a 220 amp AGM battery, and that was three, no, uh, yeah, that was 300, just under 300 quid. So you got to ask yourself, and that's without a solar panel and MPPT and all the malarkey that goes with it. You got to ask yourself, this costs 12 quid. Four cans of gas, seven pounds. Kind of quite expensive, isn't it, to cook on electric? But is it environmentally friendly? Well, that little bit of metal there that costs 12 quid, well, that probably just if you chuck that away, it'll probably just rust and disintegrate apart from the cast. Lithium, on the other hand, or a lead acid battery. And all this plastic, probably not so. So at the moment, the cost of cooking electric is quite expensive, considering 12 quid and seven pounds for four cartridges. So I'll leave that thought with you. Right, well, I'm gonna end the video here because What's more to say? You know, like when you start looking at the cost of cooking electric against a simple gas installation, i.e. when those little little cooktops cost 12 quid from B&Q or Tesco's or Go Outdoors or whatever, and then you can just go and buy the little gas cartridges. You can buy seven from a cheapy budget shop for like seven quid, and that's it. A kettle for you know tenner you got hot water make a cup of coffee pot noodles or whatever but to upgrade from there then you're looking at lpg tanks and if you want to go further like i've done cooking on electric then obviously your 220 amp agm battery is cutting it very very fine very fine with the alarms going off and the sun is Belting it down at the moment. So, yeah, you've got to look at the cost of the battery, which the AGM, uh, I think it was around, like, just under 300 quid. And then, obviously, with the solar controller, which is Victron, depends what you want to purchase. Uh, the Victron one was, I can't remember now, it was over 250 odd quid, I think, something like that, probably a little bit more. And then all the cabling and everything else that goes with it, the solar panel and then the inverter against 12 quid. Now, this is not the end of the video because obviously when I get my Roma 300 amp hour lithium battery, I'm going to do all these tests again. So I hope you stuck with me through the end. Uh, and you've got some value out of this video. I'm not an expert. All I've done is I've bought some stuff, fitted it to see what it does. So anyway, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing. There's lots more crap to come. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.